What's up, everybody? It's another Tuesday. You know what that means. Another episode of the Inside of Ties. We're going to drop the beat. Nope. Actually, we're going to give you the topic for this week. Topic for this week. Will campless successfully transition? Transition into what? I'm sure you're thinking, uh, what, what is he saying? Campless has become StockX. Will it successfully transition? And I'm going to drop an introduction to another brand that people don't really talk about a whole lot, but it's out there and you should know about it. So come back after the theme song real quick and let's get into this discussion. All right, so today's discussion basically is going to be about uh, Campless's transition into StockX. Now, those of you that have never heard of Campless, Campless was the place where you went to look and check on resale prices for a certain um, shoes that came out, right? And the guy that created it, his name is Josh Luber, and he was tracking sales from eBay and different places, and then he would do rankings, and he would basically set it up as if um, sneakers were stock. Well, this eventually evolved into um, StockX. So Campless is no longer the Campless website. Um, it is now the StockX website, and it's a marketplace of things. But what Campless really is, it's an opportunity for um, Josh, who developed it, to capture some of that billion-dollar market that's the resale market out there that we all know about if you're into the sneaker business, all right? Or if you're just into sneaker reselling, the sneaker buying, whatever, you know about this resale market that's out here. It's a great opportunity for him to capture that. Now, the cool thing that he did was he took his passion for the sneakers and for the information and he parlayed it into an investment. So he's basically set up Campless to become StockX and StockX is now taking shoes on. But um, my question is, will Campless successfully transition into Stock X, will it be successful? I have a few things to look at before I get into that. And one of the things that have to be kind of analyzed when we look at this is how are they advertising, uh, what they're doing to kind of promote the brand of Stock X. And all of these things have to be factored into whether it's going to be profitable or not. Now, I can't say because it's not a public company. It does have an investor in Dan Gilbert, the guy that owns the Cleveland Cavaliers. So it's pretty impressive that he was able to parlay this information and uh, this all of this information that he was stocking for all of us sneaker lovers out here who were following certain shoes and the resale value. But let me drop some things in here and then talk about those. And I'm going to drop a few pictures in and we're going to get into that. So give me one second so I can transition to the pictures. All right. One second. All right. There are a number of factors that you have to look at when you are basically kind of analyzing whether a business is going to be successful or not. Now, I don't know how much money they're spending, but I knew, do know that StockX is, is currently paying Google AdWords to get customers. Now, I don't know if they paid anybody for the Wale video that they did, but on this Investopedia website, you can see a StockX ad. Now, on the Dime magazine, you see a StockX ad. That means that they're paying for Google AdWords. Google AdWords are basically, you take your money, you pay Google to show the ads in different places, but you have to pay to actually place those ads in different places. And you also have to pay for keywords. So it's really important to think about when you look at how they're acquiring customers. They're putting money out. That means that they have to be bringing money in. So it's very easy once you click that link and go to StockX to find a product and then put up your own product. It's not difficult at all. And you can put that in the pros list as far as whether the business is going to be successful. Now, once you get it up, you can see the ask or how much you're willing to ask for it. And you can see the highest bid for it. And all of that information is very clear and straightforward. So StockX is a very easy place to list products. To list your product. So when you use StockX, it's very e it's user friendly. That's the most important aspect of having a business that's on the web. Now, my question of whether it will be successful is um, has to be kind of framed in two different ways. Um, I haven't sold anything on StockX, so I don't know how efficient it is to send things in. But what I do realize is they're only charging 10 percent, but they also charge a shipping fee. And that's because when you buy it, when you sell something, they have the product shipped to them, shipped to them and then they authenticate it. StockX has placed itself ahead of everyone else in this department. Now, 
I say I haven't sold anything. Now I'm not, I'm I'm just amused. I'm saying now way too much. But I haven't sold anything on StockX, but it seems that StockX is a great place for people who are selling higher end products. That may be an issue because there are more people who buy products that are not as expensive. So you have to you have to wonder if enough people are paying for products on StockX right now for it to be successful. Like I said, I don't know the numbers. I can't see it. It's a private company. It has an investment from Dan Gilbert. That's obviously public and that's a big deal. So we don't know. But what I have to assume is I've listed probably 20 to 30 things at different times and small numbers and bigger numbers, maybe nine at a time. And I never sold anything. As a matter of fact, I had a lot of people that would lowball as far as they would place a bid or not a bid, but they would put up a offer for that product and it was way below what I was asking. So I literally took it down and I sold it on another platform. So for me, it's not that great of an option, but if you have a lot of products that are higher end products, then yeah, it's probably gonna be a pretty good place for you. I think over the long term, as they kind of play around with things, StockX has the potential to be a very, very good website for more than just sneakers. And I think they're gonna to have to make the transition into other things sooner than later because the sneaker market has changed. But StockX is a great kind of project to look at and analyze. I do think you guys should all go out there if you have something to kind of sell to put it up and see how it works for you. Now, that's the end of that section. Uh, the next section that we're getting into is pretty straightforward. Um, I'm gonna, well, I would drop something in here and I said I was gonna talk about it, but coming projects. I'm going to put the website here. It'll be in the description also. Coming Projects is a sneaker company, and I think they're making some really dope stuff. So go and check out Coming Projects. That's the end of this episode. Not going to run it too long. Let me know what you guys think about StockX. I'm really interested in hearing it. See you next week, Tuesday. Peace.